Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice problem on arithmetic sequences. So we have the sequence x over y, xy, x plus y, and x minus y, and we're going to work with this arithmetic sequence. So this is a special type of sequence. And where does this problem come from? First of all, this problem was made in collaboration with Dr. PK. I've done another collab video a while ago. I'm going to try to share that link as well. And I want you to check out his channel because he does a lot of great problems with math olympiads, calculus, and so many other things. So make sure to check it out. I'm going to include all the links down below. And this problem was inspired by a problem that was posted on Twitter by Professor Nandor, which is a great teacher. He does math problems and he provides great solutions on Twitter. I'm going to share the link to his profile as well as the actual problem. And the problem is asking for the following. These are the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence and we're supposed to find the fifth term. And Dr. Nandor, thank you for the problem. This is a great problem and uh, not too hard, not super duper easy, very interesting idea. Anyways, let's proceed with the solution to this problem. Great, so we have basically the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence. And we're gonna try to find the fifth term. So the idea is basically the following. We do need to find X and Y, right? And to find the X and Y, we're basically going to work with an arithmetic sequence, arithmetic sequence. So that kind of requires that we do take care of the common difference, which is D for arithmetic sequences. So if you ever forgot what arithmetic sequences are, then a quick reminder. So we basically have like a first term and then add D, which is a common difference, and then add D again, and then add D again, and so on and so forth. So this is what an arithmetic sequence looks like. There's always a common difference between consecutive terms. But our sequence is made up of x over y, xy, x plus y, and x minus y. So all, using all these arithmetic operations, we make up four terms, and they happen to be in an arithmetic sequence, which is awesome, I think. Okay, great. So uh, Dr. PK is also going to make a video on this, and you'll get to see it hopefully too but he's going to use a slightly different method as far as I know. You can definitely compare and contrast. All right, let's get started. So here's what I'm going to do first. It, there's a lot of beautiful properties about arithmetic sequences, but one of them is if you take two terms of an arithmetic sequence that are the same distance from a given point, like a center, then their sums are always going to be equal. Because arithmetic sequence basically works on arithmetic mean, which is the average of the two terms, so that always brings you to the middle. Okay, so in this sense, we can safely say that x over y plus x minus y is the same thing as xy plus x plus y. Great, that's the first relationship I'm going to use. Now here, x cancels out, and then we kind of end up with something like this, x over y equals xy plus 2y. Great. A couple of different things we can do, but first of all, notice that y cannot be zero, pay attention to that, and then multiply both sides by y under that condition. That gives you x equals x y squared, not x squared, x y squared plus 2y squared. And this allows you to solve for x. Let's go ahead and subtract x y squared and then take out x and then divide both sides and boom, you got x in terms of y. This is nice. Now what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do with my solution is, I'm going to plug this in. But before that, I want to use one more relationship between the terms, because if we're given four terms, you can write a couple different equations. Okay, the next one I'm going to use works with averages, the same idea, but in an average sense. And here's how I'm going to use it. This term and this term, when averaged, is supposed to give me this one. Okay? That's how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and average, the, average those two terms, x over y and x plus y. And their average is supposed to equal xy. And then from here, I get the following. x over y plus x plus y equals 2xy. Again, you could just multiply both sides by y and proceed 
or you can just make the replacement. Remember, x is equal to that, this, and if you divide it by y, you're going to lose one of these y, so it's going to look like this. When you divide x by y, it's going to be 2y over 1 minus y squared, plus x is going to be 2y squared over 1 minus y squared, because you didn't lose the y, and then plus y is just going to be y, because don't ask why, you know why, hopefully, and then 2 times x, which is 2y over 1 minus y squared, I mean 2y squared, and then multiply that by y again, that should give you a y cubed. How nice. But notice that when you make a common denominator, you're almost there. These are all the same things. So you're just going to multiply this by 1 minus y squared. We can totally get rid of the denominators. But of course, in the sense, y should not equal 1. Is that important? You'll see in a little bit. Anyways, let's go ahead and take care of this common denominator arithmetic thingy plus y times 1 minus y squared is 4y cubed. Awesome. Let's simplify this a little bit. I get 2y plus y, that's 3y, and then I get 2y squared minus y cubed equals 4y cubed. Let's put everything on the same side and come up with a cubic, but this cubic is very easy to solve. 5y cubed minus 2y squared minus 3y is equal to 0. Always, always remember with polynomials, what did I say in so many other videos? Always check for common factors and also check for 1 and negative 1. Look at the sum of the coefficients. It's 0, so y equals 1 is a solution. But before that, there's another solution that is more important. That is 0, right? Cool. So you can factor the y out, and that's going to give you a quadratic. So from here, we get the following solutions. To keep a long story short, I mean... Come on, you can solve this quadratic, right? And notice that I still have the sum of coefficients being 0. Of course, that's not going to change because y equals 1 needs to be a solution. Okay, anyways, let me give you the factor. Since I know that y minus 1 is a factor by factor theorem, the other factor is supposed to be 5y plus 3. Think about it. You can easily construct it once you know y minus 1. Make sense? Great. So let's go ahead and write each solution, each potential solution, each candidate. y equals 0, y equals 1, and y equals negative 3 fifths. Now, why did I say candidates? Because y cannot be 0. Too bad, right? Because what did we say? x over y needs to be valid, well-defined, real, so y equals 0 is not allowed. And remember what we just talked about, 1 minus y squared. You can't tell y equals 1 either. Uh-oh, everything went except for this. So that's the only solution. Uh, another thing to like about this problem is it has a unique solution. Okay, so you don't have to pick between solutions. You kind of pick, but anyways. <laughs> so y equals that, and what is x? 2y squared divided by 1 minus y squared. Remember that? Replace y with negative 3 fifths. 2 times 9 over 25 divided by 1 minus 9 over 25. Forget about the 25 and just focus on this. 2 times 9 is 18. 25 minus 9 is 16. And then if you divide by 2, you're going to get 9 over 8 as the x value. That's not what we're looking for. We do need to find the fifth term, which is a sub 5. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, first of all, since x and y are given like this, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of different things. Like, what is a sub 3? The third term is 9 over 8 minus 3 over 5. Because remember, that was the difference, right? And y is negative 3 fifths. I'm sorry, it's the sum, but the sum brings a negative sign. So it's going to be a minus sign. And then this is just going to be 21 over 40. And then a sub 4 is the difference, but it just becomes the sum. That's also interesting, right? Sum becomes difference, difference becomes the sum. And we get these two terms. And then to find d, I just need to look at this consecutive difference. And that's a sub 4 minus a sub 3, which is 69 over 40 minus 21 over 40, which is 48 over 40. And you can simplify that. So d becomes 6 over 5. And then a sub 5 is just a sub 4 plus d. Remember, we were always adding the common difference, but a sub 4 is 69 over 40. Just had to add 6 over 5 or 48 over 40 to it. And that's going to give you 117 over 40. If you divide, you're going to get something 2.7 something. It's less than 3, greater than 2. All right? And I think this brings us... Looks like it. To the end of this video, thank you for watching. Thank you, Dr. Nandor and Dr. PK. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.